Hey everybody, uh, it's currently the uh, 13th of July in 2010. Looks like we're going to have our first landfalling uh, typhoon of the uh, season today. Uh, typhoon Kansan, or a Zero Three Whiskey as we call it out here. Uh, it's going to be making landfall in a central zone today. Uh, likely only a Cat 1 to Cat 2 status it's going to max out as. But as we can go into a satellite picture, zoom in on this. Well, very well organized today, and we're going to break the satellite picture down a little bit more. So let's go a little closer. So uh, Zero Three Whiskey's make it landfall currently in uh, southern Luzon, right in the central Philippines. You can kind of see to the uh, southern end here, a little bit more ragged it's due to the interaction with the islands here. But uh, still a lot of convection in the, cent the uh, central, low vertical wind shear aloft, and uh, high uh, heat contact in the ocean is still allowing for uh, moderate uh, intensification as this makes near landfall. Uh, not expecting it maybe not to get to a quite Cat 2 equivalent status, but definitely a Cat 1 here. Now, the exact location of it, though, uh, since it's moving so rapid, it's going to be kind of unimportant as it makes uh, landfall here, uh, especially for the uh, city of Manila right in this area. Manila Bay is located right here. If it uh, tracks just to the north, then uh, it's probably going to be spared by over uh, 30 knots of uh, winds higher than it would be just to the south due to the fact that the storm's moving at 17 knots. So if it's on the right side, uh, take 17 uh, multiplied by 2, you got over 30 knots of wind as opposed to the uh, southern side. Of it. At this time, though, it looks like it's going to make a uh, right near uh, direct uh, hit on uh, Manila, so uh, lots of wind and rain. So I'm really curious how this is going to uh, end up unfolding here. But let's go to a vis shot, a little more higher detail. Okay, so here you can see a lot more detail in uh, what I'm talking about here. Uh, lots of convection right near the center of the storm. Still got a high heat content in the Philippine Sea. Temperatures are above 90 degrees. Uh, lots of good inflow coming in from the south associated with these uh, rain bands down here. So uh, the only disadvantage of that, though, is that the fact that it's going to be running over these uh, islands here. And some of these islands have a lot of mountains on them. So a lot of these uh, rain bands are going to... Uh, um, rain out over this area, also possible uh, mudslides and uh, flooding in the low-lying regions right in here. Now, uh, as you can see, though, this system's moving basically due west right now, so it looks like a direct hit on uh, Manila Bay right in here, so something to closely watch. Now, likely, though, by the time it reaches Manila Bay, it's going to be a weak cap one to a tropical storm, so winds, I really want to worry about too much. It's uh, more the fact of flooding throughout this region. You remember some of the typhoons last year really caused some major damage for this. Also, want to note though, it looks like some uh, dry air entrainments happening to uh, further on the uh, northern side of this storm, uh, extending out into the western Pacific High. So, hopefully, that gives it enough um, dis uh, dissipation right before making a landfall over here as well to bring it down to a tropical storm. But I'm going to closely watch this though. Uh, still, some a uh, lot of CBs near the center here, or cumulonimbus clouds, some thunderstorms. So, definitely not a uh, storm to a uh, discount now, even though it is rather weak. Uh, Cat 1 on the uh, Saffron Simpson scale uh, is still a pretty strong system. So, I'm um, going to keep on watching it here. Now, we're going to move on to uh, some ship bobs. I'll show you. Okay, now this is some uh, ship observations from uh, civilian ships in the uh, area of uh, Kansan and the uh, Philippines here. Now the reason why I'm showing you this is to show that the uh, winds within the storm are actually within a uh, very compact area, only about 50 miles across. Uh, this area right here, this uh, ship right here, only about 100 miles away, is uh, currently reporting 5 knot winds from the south. Uh, validity of that I'm not sure of but um, even though you move farther to the uh, the west here seven knots in Manila Bay coming from the uh, southwest and 11 knots even farther south so uh, this is what it this is telling me though is the winds are very compact uh, I think one of the best um, tools that a lot of us uh, overlook especially on the ocean and even back in the states when we're looking at uh, severe weather running across the uh, US is just actual observations on the ground because this can really discount out some of the models uh, showing uh, if the models were showing a very wide uh, swath of winds as well so uh, something to uh, something to note here okay so let's uh, break down GTWC's warning here uh, the Joint Typhoon Warning Center that's out of uh, Pearl Harbor in Hawaii uh, these guys basically warn on all the uh, cyclones and uh, typhoons out in the Western Pacific and Indian Ocean. Now they're uh, currently uh, stating that current winds are about 70, gusting up to uh, 85 knots. Um, it's going to gradually dissipate as it goes over the Philippines, but then after it goes into the, uh, the uh, South China Sea over here, so the whole area is uh, called the South China Sea. 
um, we would uh, think that it would uh, gradually start to increase again, but that's really not going to be the case. Um, vertical wind shear aloft is really going to start knocking this system over, and it's already going to be weakened enough. So, uh, as that uh, wind shear starts to hit it, it's really going to gradually weaken even more as it heads up towards Hong Kong. So, uh, something to uh, note there, though. Um, and that's also what they're uh, forecasting. Uh, as it gets near Hong Kong, though, um, max winds currently are going to be looking about 35, up near about 45 knots. So, uh, good news for that city. Uh, I know they're very hurricane prone. They're sitting out on an island. So, uh, something to note. Uh, now, we're going to move on to the uh, wind shear map, and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about here. Now, here's the uh, current wind shear map provided by uh, Sims. Uh, now it's showing that approximately about 30 knots of wind shear all across the South China Sea here. Right here is the uh, 30 knot contour line, and that's really way too high for um, tropical development or further tropical intensification. We all know that anything less than a 15 to 10 to 15 knots is actually pretty good. And even as it gets farther up north here, up to 40 to 50 knots associated with the subtropical jet rate in this area. So definitely going to uh, weaken the storm even further. And uh, as I already stated, though, very good news for uh, Hong Kong up in that area. And ending with my last shot shot here, this is from a wind set. And the big thing I wanted to note about this is uh, that the uh, center of circulation is really tight within the system. And even though it was taken last night at 12Z, also shown showing that the, the wind swath doesn't really go out that far. After you go out a couple hundred kilometers, drops down to around uh, 10 to 50 knots. But we already noted this on the ship, Bob, so I just wanted to uh, show one further product to uh, demonstrate this. So uh, news with this, though, if this uh, system does jog a little bit farther north, you know, up to about 50 miles, it'll largely spare the uh, city of Manila and uh, a lot of people around that area. So just something to know. Okay, that's all for today. Hope everybody uh, stays safe, stays dry out there, and uh, if you have any questions or anything, just uh, write me on here, and uh, hope you all uh, have a great day. Bye.